Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. Since the implementation of the chip rules, the Biden team has shown no mercy to Chinese companies, constantly upgrading and suppressing sanctions, and uniting with allies to isolate Chinese companies, trying to completely destroy the Chinese semiconductor industry. But the stubborn resistance of Chinese companies has caused the United States to lose money heavy. At the recent Asian Vision Forum, held in Singapore, former U.S. Treasury Secretary Summers once again made a rogue request, asking China to make a so-called strategic guarantee, which mainly means that as long as China promises not to project its economic power to the world, the ban on Chinese companies including Huawei will be lifted. This means that the Chinese can only earn Chinese money. Faced with such unreasonable demands, based on the current level of stalemate in the game between China and the United States, it is naturally impossible for China to compromise. The recent attitudes of India and Japan towards Chinese companies are very serious. It may be instigated by the United States in order to achieve the so-called strategic guarantee. Chips are the core of the development of modern science and technology. The United States has controlled the entire supply chain for nearly half a century, but because of a wrong approach, the manufacturing industry has been transferred to Asia, and the degree of technological autonomy of TSMC, Samsung and other companies has continued to rise. Under the circumstances, the high degree of dependence has made American companies gradually lose the initiative. I never thought that the recent reversal has come. The always tough Biden team has begun to compromise, extending the exemption period for Korean companies and Taiwanese companies in the Chinese market. This active adjustment is obviously not simple. So what is hidden behind it? Are they playing tricks on Chinese companies again? The United States took the initiative to extend the exemption period. After the launch of the chip rules, the state has increased its investment in the semiconductor field. Major universities have successively established integrated circuit disciplines to help the cultivation of talents, an industrial transformation, and upgrading. Under the high enthusiasm, the state has also given 70% of the chips my own goal, is that under Huawei's domestic substitution plan, Chinese companies will cumulatively cut orders for 97 billion chips imported from overseas in 2022. According to the data provided by the customs, this data will continue to grow in 2023. Under the constraints of chip regulations, American manufacturers cannot ship high-end products, resulting in a sharp decline in revenue and profits. The only market value that can develop positively, only NVIDIA, which took off with the help of the AI industry, is left. A large number of American companies can only rely on layoffs to maintain normal operations. Under the US's all-out suppression and sanctions, China has laid out the prototype of an independent industrial chain instead. This is naturally unbearable for the Biden team, so it has pressured Japan and the Netherlands to sign a tripartite agreement. After the compromise, AMSL can only 1980DI equipment was shipped, while Japan restricted the shipment of 23 core-making products, and the restricted area directly dropped to 45 nanometers. Even in such a difficult environment, China's firm belief in industrial independence has not been disturbed in any way. As Bill Gates said, the United States 
cannot prevent China from having high-performance chips. Successive breakthroughs in core technologies, the United States' the core position also began to shake. The United States can only spread the restrictive rules to the whole world. Whether it is an American company or an international company, they are treated equally. As long as they use the technology containing the United States, they must abide by the chip rules. All behaviors in the Chinese market will be controlled. Samsung, SK Hynix, TSMC, and other companies have greatly affected their layout in the Chinese market. But what is unexpected is that South Korea has been extremely tough throughout the process. When invited to join the four-party chip alliance, South Korean companies demanded that they not give up the Chinese market as a condition, otherwise they refused to join this unequal alliance. South Korea's persistence has also brought about certain results. The United States has granted South Korean companies a one-year exemption period. And this exemption period began in October last year, and the license will expire in a blink of an eye. But what is unexpected is that the United States took the initiative to extend the exemption period and gave up the upgrade of the chip rules. The Wall Street Journal of the United States has this has been confirmed, and the business of South Korean companies and Taiwanese companies in the mainland market will be retained after the license expires. What is America's purpose? Any actions of the Biden team are obviously deliberate. It is naturally impossible to extend the license for the Chinese market. The high probability is due to the current market environment. Retaining the operations of Korean companies and Taiwanese companies in the Chinese market can be effective. Easing the process of autonomy in the medium term. This is nothing compared to a slap and a candy, but China has already seen through such charity. Driven by Huawei, Chinese companies have seen the hope of breaking the monopoly of Western countries. In recent years, Chinese entrepreneurs have abandoned the businessman's thinking of buying is worse than building and renting is worse than buying. According to statistics from professional research institutions in the United States, the total number of layoffs in the technology industry will exceed 136,000 in 2023, breaking the record of more than 20 years of dust. And who will be at the mercy of the Biden team? Of course, China also needs to be vigilant. This may be a signal of the Biden team's compromise, but it may also be the practice of continuous infiltration. This is equivalent to burying a mine, and there are many unstable factors. Some of the most real, what do you think about this?